today, approximately 80 people will have a heart attack uh, in the UK, the whole of the UK, approximately 80 people have a heart attack outside hospital. A heart attack leading to cardiac arrest. There'll be a lot more people have heart attacks, but not all heart attacks lead to cardiac arrest. Um, that's every day, 80 people. Now, a heart attack leading to cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest, of course, means death, can take just a few minutes from the first symptoms. Uh, sometimes it takes a bit longer, but it can be a very short time indeed. And uh, the symptoms can be strong pain in the chest, maybe not strong pain, maybe light pain, can be in the arms, can be in other parts of your body, can be in the jaw, shortness of breath. They can be um, <clears throat> very strong symptoms sometimes, sometimes very light symptoms. But there comes a point when you know, the people around you know, that you really need to call an ambulance, of course. Um, and I would imagine most people watching this, whatever their political persuasion, would expect the ambulance to arrive within minutes. If you don't look at the, if you don't look at the actual, um, the actual, figures and statistics. If you ask most people how long do you think it will take for an ambulance to arrive when someone, when something very serious like a heart attack is happening, I would imagine most people would say 10 minutes. In fact, the target has been for ambulances to arrive in emergencies 8 minutes. That is the maximum time. And it's interesting when we look at the figures, because looking at the figures in the year 2011, 2010, 2011, 71% of ambulances arrived in an emergency situation, category A or category 1, it's changed over the last few years, but these emergency, 71% of um, ambulances arrived from the time there was the call to arriving at the location within eight minutes. That means that um, you know, most of those could have taken two or three minutes, five or six minutes, but 71% within eight minutes. Uh, Another 20% arrive within 15 minutes. So that's 91% of ambulances arriving within 15 minutes, 71% of them within eight minutes. This was considered at the time, 2010, 2011, which I will remind you is when the Conservatives came to power, albeit in coalition with the Liberal Democrats. That was considered to be not very good. The aim was to, of course, achieve 100% of ambulance arrivals within eight minutes. What has happened since then? Well, since then, the Conservatives, either in coalition with the Liberal Democrats or by themselves ruling, have made massive, massive, massive cuts to frontline uh, health emergency services. Uh, ambulances have borne the brunt of this. What's the result of that? Well, that's interesting because today, I'm looking at the figures here, a bit complicated graphs. Uh, you've got uh, hospital, you, you've got uh, trusts which now run uh, ambulance services in most places across the UK. Until um, February 2012, uh, <clears throat> most of those trusts were reaching the target of, uh, of the eight-minute response call. Then for the first time in February uh, 2012, a majority of the trusts running the ambulance services in England and Wales anyway, um, didn't reach that limit. Um, they breached that target, which means most of the ambulances, this is in, by the way, category A, category one uh, cases. These are emergency cases when a person has a heart attack, for example. Um, you then had a majority of the time uh, a majority of the trusts running ambulance services not reaching that target for the first time regularly in from about August 2013. And then from about a uh, couple of exceptions over several months, from December 2015, January 2016, you then have a situation where all of 
the trusts reporting their ambulance arrival times, all of them, not just a majority, are not meeting the eight minute um, uh, response time target. What is the result of this? It's very hard to say because you would have to know what the outcome of ambulances not arriving on time are. Well, it just so happens that fortunately, uh, just a couple of months ago, a whistleblower in just one of the uh, ambulance trusts, the East of England Ambulance Trust, leaked just over for a few months, the end of last year, the beginning of this year, the response time from initial call uh, to the ambulance at the time of arrival and also along with the outcomes for the patients. And this is very interesting. I've had a good look at this. And um, it is absolutely shocking because we're talking about eight minutes here. But what is happening now is that people are not just waiting tens of minutes, they're waiting hours for ambulances for emergency and emergency situations. And what is the outcome we've seen from this leak that the outcomes are that, of course, patients are dying. They're having heart attacks. I've taken one emergency situation. There are others, of course. There are strokes. There are um, uh, accidents. I'm just taking one and looking. And I picked out uh, some of those uh, outcomes and how long the patients had to wait in this one area. And I'll give you the, the date. I'll give you the, um, the city. This is over, this is from December of 2017 to January um, of this year, uh, because this was leaked. So we don't have these, uh, these, this data norm normally. It's shocking. Listen to this. On the 25th of December, I, I'm doing it from the, from the shortest shocking time to the longest. I've taken the cardiac arrest cases. 25th of December uh, 2017 in Dunstable, a patient went into cardiac arrest, uh, an ambulance was called, the ambulance arrived 29 minutes later. The outcome was that the patient died. Presumably, no one can say, but presumably if the ambulance had arrived within eight minutes, that patient would not have died. On the 3rd of January on, in Leon C, uh, a patient reported shortness of breath, which then progressed to cardiac arrest they waited 38 minutes for the ambulance to arrive. That patient died. On the 21st of December, in Beckles, chest pain reported, which progressed to cardiac arrest. The patient had to wait 44 minutes. That patient died. On the 31st of December, in Barling, Manga, shortness of breath called made at 2.24 p.m. The second call was then made because no ambulance arrived. At four minutes past three for cardiac arrest, which was 45 minute wait, the patient died. Uh, on the 2nd of January in Tiptree, chest pain progressed to cardiac arrest. In that case, the patient had to wait 47 minutes for an ambulance to arrive. The patient died. On the 1st of January in Bushy, shortness of breath was reported, which progressed to cardiac arrest. That patient had to wait 47 minutes for an ambulance. That patient died. The 1st of January in Wells, um, a cardiac arrest, 55 minutes it took for the ambulance to arrive, overstretched ambulance service to arrive, that patient died. 25th of December, Basildon, cardiac arrest, that patient had to wait one hour, 11 minutes for the overstretched ambulance service to arrive, the patient died. 29th of December, in Thetford, another cardiac arrest, that patient had to wait one hour, 12 minutes for an ambulance to arrive, the patient died. 3rd of January 2017, this is one area of Britain, one area of Britain over just two months. The 3rd of January 2017 in Henham, uh, there was a, a patient uh, reported a fit which progressed to cardiac arrest. That patient had to wait one hour, 23 minutes for our overstretched ambulance service to arrive. The patient died. 2nd of January in Canvey Island, patient went into cardiac arrest. They had to wait three hours 34 minutes for the ambulance. The patient, of course, died. 2nd of January in Clacton, chest pain, progressed to cardiac arrest. That patient had to wait 3 hours 45 minutes because of the overstretched ambulance service. That patient died. On the 31st of December in Benfleet, someone fell, collapsed, it progressed to cardiac arrest. That patient had to wait 
Six hours, seven minutes, the patient died. 27th of December, in Norwich, cardiac arrest reported. Seven hours, 22 minutes, an ambulance couldn't arrive there before. The patient died. 27th of December, in Chatteris, 13 hours, 18 minutes, a patient had to wait. The patient died while waiting for the ambulance. In Lowestoft, on the 27th of December, it was the first call made to a patient outside uh, no response was sent. Second call on the 27th from the police themselves who called the ambulance. They found the patient in cardiac arrest. The ambulance took 16 hours to res respond because they were too overstretched. The patient then had actually not just had cardiac arrest but had frozen to death. And on the 26th of December in Stowe Market, a patient had to wait from the 24th of December until the 26th of December before a second call was made and the patient then went into cardiac arrest, but it was too late. The patient died. So we've now got patients waiting hours, certainly tens of minutes, hours, in emergency situations, heart attack situations, cardiac arrest situations, for overstretched ambulance service. They're not arriving. And my question to Tory voters is this. This is entirely due to cuts to the frontline ambulance service in order to give... Um, tax cuts to multi-billionaires who coincidentally all happen to be most of them Tory party donors when it happens if and when it happens to you because most of us will die of heart failure that's a fact hopefully it will be when we're old in our sleep in a hospital some of us it will happen remember 80 people a day when you're outside of hospital if you or your loved ones are waiting for an ambulance and you're dying waiting for an overstretched ambulance service to arrive, will you still think it was worth cutting those services in order to give tax cuts to multi-billionaires? If you think it, it would still be worth it, go ahead and vote Tory. If you've got any doubts at all, you need to stop voting Conservative.